Right. Well, then, let, let me give you a what-if. We're on lockdown for this year, and oh, right goodness. now, the EU ambassadors are meeting, as you said. Yeah. Meeting's going on, and you never know, the white smoke might come out in the next two minutes during this interview. If it did, if I heard in my earpiece, they've, they've come up to a decision, and they've said, yes, they're going to extend it until January, and we were doing this interview live, would you then say, right, then I'll vote for an election on Monday? Providing the Prime Minister comes to Parliament on Monday and makes it absolutely clear he is going to make sure that there is no crash out because his deal includes the possibility of a no deal exit. Well, he's not going to do that though, is he? Well, he's going to have to do that because that's uh, uh, that's how Parliament works. We've got to hold him to account because I think a no, a no deal exit is very dangerous. If he comes on Monday and says that, OK. OK, he... but, but the thing is, you see, he probably won't do that. And what people watching this will think is, well, Jeremy Corbyn is actually hiding behind this because he's frightened of an election. Yeah. He's frightened for two reasons. One, because his personal poll ratings, your personal poll ratings, are awful. Uh, they've never been as bad. Uh, and your party's poll ratings are dreadful too. And if there were an election based on the poll at the moment, you'd lose and the Tories would win. Are you frightened of an election? No, not at all. I'm very happy to go out and campaign, very happy to be out campaigning. I do it all the time anyway. I love campaigning. I love being out do talking to people, meeting people. Yes. But last, you... the last election, 2017, we were written off by everybody, mm -hmm. and look what happened. But you had Theresa May yeah. running the worst campaign probably in the 20th century. Well, um, we could go into lots of uh, what-ifs here, but I yeah. tell you this. Out there, there's people on universal credit, there's people in housing stress, there's people in debt, terrible debt in middle age, trying to care for older people and younger people through university. We've got to end austerity. We've got to do things differently. So, so, what, so, so yeah. yes, yes. So why shouldn't an election? Why shouldn't an election be a higher priority? I mean, stuff because the no deal stuff. I've said all along, take no deal off the table, and we'll have the election. Because no deal, no deal. Think what it does. Ford in Bridge End gone. It's Nissan in Sunderland ready to go if they lose their trade access. Airbus in North Wales, and so on, all across the country. So how, long, so that, so how long do we have to wait, then? Because if he doesn't say what he I wants think to say probably Monday, a couple how much longer? I think probably a couple of days, maybe even today. You, mean you think he'll cave in? Listen, he has got to understand that uh, the protection of jobs and the protection of the Good Friday Agreement and peace process in Northern Ireland are very, very important. Mm -hmm. His proposals don't do any of that. But haven't you all got to understand that we're all fed up to the back teeth? We really are. I'm not talking mm. about those of you in Parliament. I'm not even talking about the political journalists who've been living in this incredible mm. bubble for three mm. years now, three years. You talk to every ordinary person yeah. you meet and they are fed up. They want something to move. Yeah. They want... Even those who voted Remain, to begin with, are now saying, for God's sake, can we come to the end of this? Absolutely. I get that all the time. I walk down my street and most people in my street probably voted Remain. Some voted leave, the majority would have voted remain. They all say, can we get this thing over? And I say, yes, but please remember the danger of no deal. That's, okay. our, that's our position. Can I, can I ask you a question? I've been, we, this is the first time we've met. I've, I've been wanting to ask you on the assumption that we'd end up doing an interview one day. And, and here it is. I'd like to. <laughs> How long have you been waiting for this? Uh, well, well, you don't do many interviews, to be honest. <laughs> oh, and I'm not on, on as often okay. as I was. But anyway, okay. here it is. Um, your, your shadow chancellor says in Who's Who that his hobby is fermenting the downfall of capitalism. He spells fermenting wrong, by the way, but we'll let that pass. Well, he spells it like the beer. He spells it like the beer, exactly. <laughs> but that's what he says. And he is, to all intents and purposes, as are you, a Marxist, which is an anti-capitalist stance. <laughs> How would it work if you did win the election to have a chancellor in number 11 who is dedicated to the downfall of capitalism? A chancellor who doesn't believe in capitalism. How on earth would that work? Well, I think you've got a chancellor who would actually be very good at managing the economy. And I've sat, you'll be surprised by this, I've sat at meetings with the Confederation of British Industry and Chambers of Commerce, Small Business Association and so on, with him. And we've got a lot of agreement on how we manage things, on our investment strategy, and his whole point So he'd is... sell out, then? He'd sell out no, the I, No, I don't think so, because he would be uh, putting forward a, the principles of socialism in the sense that we try to ensure our economy works for the benefit of... Well,